Hello and welcome back to Reactions by Jeff. Today I'm going to be looking at Dimash's Restart My Love. Um, this is from 2018, so this is about two years old. And um, again, it's uh, it's from his uh, Chinese era. And so I'm interested to hear a little bit more about um, this. If you have some interesting information that you want to share in the comments, please feel free. Um, I don't I don't do a lot of research on it because I I don't necessarily trust the research that I see on him as of yet. Um, I'm sure as time goes on, it'll get better as more people start contributing to the the public information on him. But um, if you can give me great information, I know that the Deers are awesome at giving great information on um, Dimash. Um, and so I look forward to hearing about that. And without any further ado, let us get started. I'm stopping it for a moment. I just, again, the Chinese shows and a lot of the shows that go on outside of the United States really have a really great artistic direction. All the video that's surrounding him, all the, the colors, all the props, all the way that it's set up is just amazing. Um, I don't think it was just designed for him, but basically it's just really beautiful. Um, and one thing I, I do want to point out, um, notice, um, and this is back at the beginning, um, let's go back here. Notice how close he's holding the mic to his mouth. And um, I was just uh, reacting to um, the Victor Ma um, Earth Song, his duet with Victor Ma. And everybody is, you know, one of the things I, I realized is that I think the sound technician screwed up when they were working with Dimash at the beginning, because while everybody sort of thinks, or a lot of people believe that he was holding back to, um, you know, not upstage, um, upstage his partner, um, it really wasn't that, I don't think. It was that I think the sound technician wasn't quite understanding how to work with Dimash's voice, because Dimash can go so far soft that the microphone has to be brought so far up. And if the technician isn't smart enough, they're not going to be able to do that transition. And that's why I think that that particular song um, didn't work out. The um, Earth Song duet didn't work out. Um, so here again, look at how close he has the mic and look at how, and if you were listening, look at listen to how soft he actually sings this particular section. And he is just a master of being soft as well as being really loud and that's just awesome. So let's bring it back here and we'll start it again. I'll, I'll, I'll move it back again. I'll rewind it in a minute. Um, but again, I know a lot of reactors really love 
talking about Dimash and, you know, the big notes and the rocker snarl and the, the you know, the seven octave range and, oh, he's off the piano. This right here where he's singing really, really soft and really, really in a in a controlled what other people would sort of call, well, well, it's normal for him. It's it. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of fluctuation in the in the in the notes overall. It's beautiful, and and that's that's why I've always called him the vocal rhetorician. Is that you hand him a song, and yes, you know, like some of the comments I've been recently reading were, like you know, if if he could you know sing you the phone book, you'd be in, you'd be happy. And yes, in some ways, yes, um, because again, he he'd be able to take the phone book, open it up figure out the melody and then just sing it right and he'd he'd know when to get big when to get small how to actually you know how to how to control things and how to how to how to really bring out the message of that phone book um yes this is a this is a joke so don't like go think I'm, i need to be committed yet but again he this is the thing that he it's really great about him is that he doesn't need to always be at the top of his registers and he doesn't always have to be doing all these runs to make it beautiful. He can just do this by just using what he has available to him and the melody and do whatever it takes to bring whatever melody that he has been given and whatever melody that has been written for him or the melody that he's written and bring the most out of it through his vocal toolbox. And so um, I'm going to rewind it just a little bit. Because, again, there's nothing really heavily showy about this in range or volume, in loudness, that is. But in the smallness of it, there's a lot to be said about it in, the, in terms of bringing the emotion of this particular piece out. Because there's, there's, there's a longing in this song that can only be cover, brought about through this softness, through this pensiveness. And so I'm just going to start it right here. So there, there was the one high note, and it was the climax of the song. And so it, everything built to that one note, that one last cry, and then now we're back down to the soft, introspective um, voice that is carrying this particular song. And even that, lo that, that note there wasn't really that bombastic in, in, Dimash's, in the Dimash that we know. And that's... That's the appropriateness of that particular note. It wasn't overdone. It wasn't showy. It was appropriate for that. And this is where people seem to miss the boat on Dimash, is when he goes big, he has to go big because the song demands it. When he goes small, it's because the song demands that it go small. He never oversteps the song. 
So again, um, going back over the song, again, the things that I, I want to really point out is we we focus a lot on Dimash in terms of the seven octaves, the eight octaves that he doesn't have, he doesn't understand the confines of the piano. He can hit every note. He can hit every note in any register. He can do all this sort of stuff. And yes, he can. Um, but again, the, the and I'm, I'm going to just say this again and then I'm going to wrap it up because there's, this is a beautiful song and he knew what to do with it. And that, that is what draws us to Dimash. And this is what will always draw us to Dimash is that when he gets into a song, he is really good at understanding what he needs to do when. And that's why I've always called him the vocal rhetorician because he is, he understands what a song needs in order to be delivered appropriately to the audience. And he uses his own understanding of his own registers, his own instrument to bring that to the people. And so he's, he, he understands the concept of appropriateness. He understands the concept of, of not overpowering a song, not overstepping it, not just singing a high note to sing a high note. It's very rare, if ever, that you see him do that. And, and again, this is, this is the power of Dimash is that yes, he can, he can do the rocker snarl and yes, he can do the super high notes and yes, he can go off the piano and yes, he can do all of that stuff. But at its core, he understands why he's doing all of that, that he's here to create that connection with the people in front of him through the gifts that he's been given. And with that, I'm going to leave it to you to talk about it in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, if you want to know when I've dropped the next video, please click the notification bell, like, have a community conversation. Just use the comments to have a community conversation about the things that you enjoy about this great artist. And with that, I hope you enjoy your day. And as always, be safe. Thank you.